Recently, the ArcJS API for JavaScript released clustering in an effort to help improve the visualization of large point data sets. Let's take, for example, this application which explores 311 calls in New York City. This data was published from a CSV file which contains the type of complaint for each incident. It also includes three date fields, the date an incident was created, the date it was due, and the date that incident was closed. The user can filter this data based on the complaint type, but they can also change the style of the layer based on one of these attributes, which are created client-side using an arcade expression using the date fields I just showed you. Let's take a look at the number of days it took to close each feature. This is mapped along a continuous color ramp. But as you can see, this is not a very useful visualization. The points are too cluttered and in many cases are stacked on top of one another, making it impossible for me to see spatial patterns in my data. However, once I enable clustering on my layer, this clutter is removed from the map and clusters appear summarizing my data. So I can gain instant insight into where more features, or more incidents tend to be reported. When I click on a cluster, the total number of features comprising that cluster is displayed in the pop-up. But perhaps my favorite part of the clustering implementation is the fact that the mapped attribute is summarized in the pop-up as well. In the case of numeric data, such as this one, the average value among all features in this cluster is displayed in the pop-up, and the corresponding color along the color ramp is, is assigned to that cluster. In the case of categorical visualization, such as, or categorical data, such as the time of day an incident was reported, the most common type is displayed in the pop-up and the corresponding color in, uh, is assigned to the cluster. Note that you can click Browse Features to look at individual features within the cluster. Let's go ahead and filter our data based on one of these types, such as noise complaints. You'll see that the clustering recalculates on the client providing me with immediate feedback so I can see areas where in the city where more noise complaints tend to be made. And not only that, since the style is separate from the clustering implementation, I can see that unsurprisingly, most of these complaints are made in the nighttime and evening hours of the day. Note that as I zoom in and out to, of my data, these, these clusters recalculate on the fly so I can observe the density of features and how that changes at various scales. Let's go ahead and look at another attribute, such as the number of days an incident was overdue at the time it closed. This is done along a continuous above and below ramp where red features indicate incidents that were closed past their due date, white features mean they were closed on time, and blue features indicate incidents that were closed early. Clearly, noise complaints were closed overwhelmingly on time. However, when I switch my filter to other complaint types, such as graffiti complaints, I note that the spatial pattern changes and I observe that these tend to be closed well past their due date. Let's take a look at another one, such as um, broken meters. You'll see that the opposite holds true here, where these tend to be closed early, and the spatial pattern is much different. In the case of street condition complaints, we see that these complaints tend to be made throughout the city. However, depending on the location of the complaint, we see that, they, that some locations tend to be neglected, when it comes to closing these incidents by their due date. In the case of this cluster, by an average of two and a half weeks. To enable clustering in your application, all you have to do is to call the set feature reduction method on your layer and set the type to cluster. That's it. That's really all that's required to get the out-of-the-box functionality that I just demonstrated to you. That includes the attribute summary in the pop-up and the ability to browse the features within your pop-up. In the future, we'll support other types of feature reduction, including thinning and binning. And I just want to reemphasize to you that all other workflows within my application remain the same. The ability to filter my data and to set the styles still requires just a few lines of code and remains completely separate from the clustering implementation. As you can see, with the ArcGIS API for JavaScript, you can create powerful data exploration applications using the new clustering features. Thank you.